time to start the class. So, class begins. Today's subject is prehistoric mammals. Today we're going to talk about prehistoric mammals. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the upcoming schedule of what the classes are going to be. So here you go. Friday, April the 10th, Tyrannosaurus Rex class. That's this Friday. If you like T-Rex, you better be prepared because this is going to be a great class. Tuesday, April the 14th, we're doing a class on animal adaptation. Not just dinosaurs, but I'll actually incorporate how modern animals have adapted. Then a new class, Friday, April 17th. I'm doing a class on rocks and minerals. And during the rocks and minerals class, we are going to break open some geodes live so you can see them, uh, see what's inside of them. So we're doing rocks and minerals on Friday, April the 17th. If you like shiny stuff, that's a class for you. And then on April 21st, I am doing a class on ancient sea creatures. So that is the list. We will post this to our site so everybody has a chance to see it. Um, so those are the upcoming classes, and I think you're going to really enjoy them a lot. The Rocks and Minerals class was a recommendation from my friend Lyndon, who recommended we do a class on Rocks and Minerals. So we're going to be doing that. In the event that this disconnects, we get disconnected for bad service, I will simply log off, record this class, and then post it back onto this page, okay? Just so everybody knows. All right, a uh, couple of other things. Well, let's talk about today's. Let's talk about today's class. It's about prehistoric mammals, but I have added birds because I have uh, the skull of a bird that I think is so in impressive. I think you really need to see it. So, this how I chose the animals because there are thousands of prehistoric mammals. How I chose the animals is is based on what I had in my collection here at home. I, was a, I, I went through and I found some skulls of different animals. So when you see this and you wonder why did I not talk about this animal or that animal, it's because the animals I wanted to talk about, at least the ones that I had with me. And at the end, there is going to be a challenge. At the end, there's going to be a game. I'm going to show you a silhouette. Now, for you young ones, a silhouette means the outline. I'm going to show you the outline of an animal, and everybody is going to try to guess what the animal is what kind of animal it is. Some of you will know by the name, but we will see if you can do that or not. All right, here is your project for today. During my class, I'm gonna show you a variety of different animals that live, mammals and, and birds that lived a long time ago. I want you to write down the name of whichever one you really liked a lot. And then I want you to go online or look through books, and I want you to find out. I'm taking these off. I don't need these anymore. Then I want you to find out where that animal lived, when it lived, meaning what time period, and what was its size, how big or small was it. Because I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to tell you the animal, but I'm not going to give you all of this detail necessarily. So that's the project for you. What I would like for you to do with the project is pick an animal, doesn't matter which one I talk about, pick one that you like, figure out where it lived, when it was alive, and how big it was. If you want to write more details, you can. And then I would like for you to post that on the Dinosaur George Jr. page. I want you to post that on the page once you've made your choice. So let's get started. Now you remember in the free educator's guide that we made available on this page, one of the pages showed you the time periods, right? There's eons, there's eras, there's periods, and there's epochs. Well, the eras we generally talk about are the, uh, the Paleocene, the Maya, I mean, I'm sorry, the, uh, um, my mind just went completely blank, the uh, Mesozoic, Cenozoic, and uh, Paleozoic. Paleozoic was the life before dinosaurs, Mesozoic was the life during dinosaurs, and Cenozoic was the time after dinosaurs. Today, we are talking about the Cenozoic era, and we break those into two periods, the tertiary and quaternary. Remember how I explained to you how scientists divide time, the way we divide a calendar, right? Well, here's an example. There is the Cenozoic era, that's the big one. Then the periods are tertiary and quaternary. And then the epochs are 
Paleocene, Eocene, Oligocene, Miocene, Pliocene, Pleistocene, and Holocene. We're in the Holocene. So what I want for you to do when you see an image of these animals is I want you to figure out which one of those epochs did they live in and then tell me the other information. So let's get started with herbivores. Now herbivores are the plant eaters. And one of the first herbivores I want to show you is a really interesting animal called Mesohippus. Mesohippus is a horse. It is one of the early horses. And what's so cool about Mesohippus is its size. It is not as large as you might think. For instance, here is his skull. Here is the skull of little Mesohippus. Oh, I've got his jaw on crooked. Sorry about that. I don't want to make Mesohippus look embarrassed. This is the skull of Mesohippus. This is, this is full grown. This is not a baby horse. This is as big as Mesohippus was. It was a very, very small horse. So if you have a horse at home, or if you like horses, this is your horse's great, 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 great grandfather. Oh, I left off one great, one more great. So this is the skull of Mesohippus. This is how big this horse really was. So it was tiny. See, what it demonstrates is not all animals were giants. Not all animals are big. There were smaller animals. Now, one of the most recognized animals when you talk about prehistoric comes from an age called the Pleistocene, and that is the Ice Age, and that was mammoths and mastodons. And people confuse the two animals. So I want to explain a little bit about mammoths and mastodons. Mammoths and mastodons are related, but they are not the same thing. They are different animals, just like African elephants and Asian elephants are two different animals. They're not the same thing living in two different places. They are different animals. They are related, but they're different. So here's an example. Mammoths had a big dome, a round thing on top of their head, and their tusks are curved much greater. They have much rounder curved tusks. Mastodons did not have those deeply curved tusks. And let me explain why I believe that they did. Because of their teeth and what they ate. The tooth, the smaller kind of yellow colored tooth you see, is a tooth from a mastodon. The other tooth, the bigger tooth in this picture, is a tooth from a mammoth. Now these two animals ate different things. Mammoths ate grass, mastodons ate leaves and twigs. That's why their tusks are different. In the winter time, if you eat grass, grass is covered by snow. If you eat leaves and twigs, it is not covered by snow. The reason why a mammoth's tusks are curved is because they act like a, show, a snow shovel. It swings its head from side to side, sweeping away the snow to get to the grass. So it needs the curved tusks to do that. Mastodons, on the other hand, do not because they're eating more from bushes and from trees and they don't have to worry about clearing away the snow. And somebody once asked me, I told them that, and they said, well, how do you know that? Because when we find mammoth tusks, they are worn flat on the bottom, on the bottom side. They're worn flat, and that's from rubbing them across the ground. So the teeth are different. The tooth of a mastodon, that's the little tooth, is made for chewing up big leaves and twigs. The tooth from a mammoth is flat, and that is so that it could grind the grass between them. See, our teeth in the back, uh, 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 I'll lay back there. Our teeth have those they're called cusps, those bumpy things. That helps us crunch up a variety of food. But if you and I ate only grass, then our teeth would be flat, like the tooth of a cow or a horse or a modern elephant, because modern elephants are grass eaters. So, or African elephants are grass eaters. So that is the difference between mammoths and mastodons. They are two totally different animals who lived at the same time in the same place, and because their teeth were different, that is an adaptation 
for how two giant animals can live together. And we'll talk about that in the adaptation class next week. All right. I mentioned birds because birds are amazing. And let's take a look at some of the birds. Let me see if I can expand this for you guys a little bit more so you can see the names a little better. All right. In this image, you see a variety of flightless birds. Some of these birds are still alive today, like, for instance, the ostrich. Ostriches are still alive today, right? And then um, uh, some of the other birds you see, like the cassowaries. I'm going to try to bring this back down so you can see all the birds again. So, like, the cassowary is alive today. The uh, emu is alive today. But the bird I want to talk about. The one that I want to focus our attention on is bird number five. That is Forus Rockus. Forus Rockus is a very dangerous bird. Here is his skull. Here is the head of Forus Rockus. Take a look at the beak on this bird. Putting it next to me. I know that dark background is hard. Let me see if maybe I can hold him up here in front of me like this so you can see him better. That bird is gigantic. Forest Rockus is an absolute monstrous bird. Forest Rockus is huge. You can see in this image, he's taller than an uh, African ostrich, number one. And you've all seen ostriches before. I know you have. So I know you've seen them. So try to imagine a bird as big as this. Now, Forest Rockus is a bird that started off in South America and migrated into North America. And remember when we were talking about extinctions and how sometimes new predators can show up and cause problems? This is a perfect example. This bird would have eaten... Where'd my little horse go? This bird was eating horses. Look, I've got his jaw messed up again. I feel embarrassed for this little guy. There we go. So, we have a bird who ate horses. That is a big bird. So, Forest Rock is an example of one of the giant killer birds. We call them the terror birds. And we only call them that because um, they probably would have been very terrifying to see. All right. So, that was a cool bird. Let's talk about dog and dog-like animals. Why do we call them dog-like? Just because something looks like an animal on the outside doesn't mean it's related to that animal. For instance, look at a giraffe and look at a Brachiosaurus. First thing you notice, they both have long necks, but they are not related in any way, shape, or form. They have no relationship to each other, right? Because they're two totally different animals. Just because they have long necks doesn't mean that that makes them uh, cousins or brothers or sisters or, 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 or close, uh, close relatives. So the same thing with some of the dogs you're about to see. Some of the animals I'm gonna show you are dogs, and some of them are not dogs, but they have appearances of dogs, or they have similarities. And to start off, we're gonna start with this really strange dog called Hesperocyon. Hesperocyon may have been the very first dog that ever existed. Hesperocyon is a dog, but look at how long its tail is. Now. You want to see how big this dog is? This is amazing. Ta-da! That's his head. There is the head of Hesperocyon. <laughs> that's as big as that dog gets. Look at that little guy. He's still got naughty little teeth in there. Don't be fooled by his teeth. He's got some naughty little teeth. Hesperocyon is the world's first dog. And the reason why his tail is so long is it may have been popped a possible that Hesperocyon may have lived in trees. It may have been what is called a boreal. A boreal meaning it lived in trees. Now, the tail probably did not hang on to the a limb like a possum's tail or, or some of the monkey's tails. Not like that. Well, not monkey's. Um, oh, yes, monkey's tails. Um, they, they weren't prehensile. They couldn't control them, I don't think. But I think that tail would have helped it balance when it was on a limb. So that was little Hesperocyon. Now we move to a little more dangerous dog. This dog's name is Borophagus. Borophagus is a very powerful dog. 
He belongs to a group we call the Bone Crushing Dogs. And here is the skull of Borophagus. Borophagus has a relatively short head, but very powerful muscles. You see this section back here? That is called the sagittal crest. The larger this crest is, the bigger the muscle that connected to it was. See, there used to be a big muscle here that went down through this hole and down to the jaw down here. And that's what gave it its biting power, its ability to bite. The bigger your sagittal crest, the more powerful your bite is. And this dog like animal, because he's not truly a dog. Maybe he is. Maybe Borophagus is a true dog. But this dog-like animal is incredibly powerful. And those gigantic jaws, look at his teeth, by the way. I don't know how well you can see this. But do you notice that his teeth are flat? His teeth are worn flat. That's because this dog chews bones. It is a bone-crushing dog. We call it that because it literally had the ability to crush the bones of whatever it was eating. And it did that so that it could get to the marrow, to the good stuff inside of the bone. So that was Borophagus, and he's bad. Let's talk about a super naughty animal. This is an animal called Hyenodon. Now, Hyenodon is not a hyena, and he's not a dog. He's something kind of, sort of, in between. And here is the skull of a hyena down. Look at those teeth. Get a load of the size of those front teeth of hyena down. When he closes his mouth, his upper and lower teeth lock. The reason for that is when he bites down, and by the way, notice the length of his sagittal crest, meaning he had a big muscle that went right through that hole and down to the lower jaw. He's got that sagittal crest because when this animal grabs you and bites down, those jaws are going to lock on. You can't get him off of you. When he's attacking something large, he grabs it, he holds it, and slows it down so that all of his buddies can show up to help him hunt. Hyena Don is a very dangerous animal. But of all the dog-like things I'm going to show you today, this is by far the worst. This is Dino Crocuda. Dino Crocuda is a giant hyena. I guess I'm trying to pick him up. Because, yes, I have the skull of one with me, but he is huge. This is pretty scary. This is the skull of Dino Crocuda. Get a load of the size of this monster. This is a giant, giant hyena with unbelievably powerful jaws, great big bone crushing teeth in the back, great big crushers in the front. This would have been one of the most dangerous animals that ever existed. If you choose Dino Crocuda as your animal, you'll be amazed at some of the lessons you're going to, you're going to get. So, Dino Crocuda is a powerful animal. Look at the size of its sagittal crest. Think of the size of the muscle. Look at the thickness of his jaws. Look at the thickness of his lower jaw. And to put into perspective sizes, Hesperocyon, Dino Crocuda. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? So that is some of the dog and dog-like animals. Now let's talk about the cat and cat-like animals. And we're going to start with Hoplophonius. Now, Hoplophonius is not a cat. Let me say that again. Hoplophonius is not a true cat. Looks just like a cat, but he's not. He's a relative. Here's the skull of Hoplophonius. Look at those long front teeth. Look at the great big long teeth. He's, he's not a member of the saber tooth family. Saber tooths are a different group. He's got a saber like tooth, meaning a big long tooth, but he's from a different family. Hoplophonius is a very fast, very small cat like animal who probably ate things like deer, rabbits, chicken nuggets, 
French fries, uh, pizza, love pepperoni. Okay, maybe not all of that stuff, but he still was a very dangerous cat. But one of the creepier cats is called Usmilus. Usmilus is another false saber tooth. He's not part of that family, but Usmilus is very different, and let me show you why. Here is the skull of Usmilus. Get a load of the length of his teeth. Oh, look at the length of Usmilus' teeth. Look at the size. And you see the way his jaw kind of hangs down? When he closes his mouth, his teeth fit right there, and that would have protected his teeth. Usmilus is a very powerful little cat-like animal who has very, very large teeth and very, very dangerous. This would not be an animal you would want to meet up with. So, I keep talking about cat-like. Dinosaur George, why don't you show us a cat? Okay, I think I will. Who said that? That's a good idea. Let's go to a real cat. Let's go to Xenosmilus. I know that name starts with the letter X, but Xenosmilus is pronounced with a Z, not an X. So it's not Xenosmilus, it is Xenosmilus, but it is spelled with an X. Here is Xenosmilus. Tell me those aren't some scary chompers. Look at those big, gnarly teeth with those great, big, giant bone slicer, bone cutter teeth in the back. This thing is very, very dangerous. And look at the length of its sagittal crest. Look at the length of its sagittal crest. Think about the size of the muscle that fit in there. Think about the bite force. And I know it's hard to see. I'm going to give it a try anyway. Its teeth are serrated. I don't think my camera is going to pick it up. I don't think my camera is going to pick it up. But it has serrated teeth. It has serrated teeth, and that means their teeth are like the tooth of a shark. Serrations are the bumpy little lines that you see on the side of a steak knife. That's called a serration. That helps to cut the meat. Its teeth are serrated. So if your animal that you choose is going to be Xenosmilus, I would be interested, and I bet you're going to be interested to know where Xenosmilus lived. Now let's talk about a monster. Let's talk about a cat that you would not want to meet. This is a cat called Macaridus. Macaridus is huge. Let me see if I can get him. Ugh. All right. Here is the skull of Macaridus. <laughs> you ever been eaten by a cat? You're about to be. This is Macaridus. Now, this is a cat who could open his jaws wide enough to fit your head inside of his mouth. Macaridus has serrated teeth. His big saber teeth are huge. And they are serrated like a shark's tooth. On the backside, it's like a steak knife. And take a look at the length of this sagittal crest. And tell me that this is not a gigantic cat. If you are a cat lover, this should be your animal to choose for your project. Choose Macaridus if you wish. But whatever you choose, those cats are going to be something you and I would never forget. All right. I told you at the beginning there was going to be a challenge. Now it's time for your challenge. Here is what we are going to do. I am going to show you an image of an animal that lived a long time ago. This is either going to be a mammal or a bird. None of these will be dinosaurs. I'm going to show you a picture, and I want you to try to guess what kind of animal you think it is. Let's get started with an animal called Chapalmelania. 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 Does anybody want to guess what this animal might be? Is it a cat? No. Let me give you a hint. If you live in North America, you might see this animal's cousins digging through your garbage can at night. It is 
a giant raccoon. It is a gigantic raccoon. That thing is a huge raccoon. How crazy is that? Let's try another one. What do you think Castoroides is? And I see your guesses. I see beaver. I see beaver, bird, beaver, badger, raccoon. Raccoon is correct, Veronica, because yours are coming in very good job. Um, uh, Alex, good job. Lauren, that's very good. Uh, see, your, I'm seeing your responses as a delay. So I'm, I'm seeing your delayed responses. That's why I know some of you are guessing. So this, this animal we're looking at right now, this is indeed a giant beaver. Castoroides is a beaver that was as tall as a person. How nuts is that? All right. This is for my friends in Texas and in Mexico and South America. What do you think that animal is? What do you think whole Messina is? Well, I see your guys' messages coming through 100 miles an hour. Can anybody guess what this animal is? What is whole Messina? And again, there's a very big delay between your comments and, uh, and me. So if I hesitate before I answer or before I respond, it's because there's a big time difference. Anybody want to guess what this animal is? Oh, Brooke, armadillo is correct. Brooke, you got it. This is a giant armadillo called Homocena. That is a giant armadillo. All right, I'm going to give you a hard one. This is going to be tough. And I see some of you are getting it too. That's very good. All right. Um, what do you think this animal is? Let me give you a hint. Its last name is Falconeri. I didn't tell you its first name because you would have all guessed what it is. I'm going to wait to see if anybody can guess what Falconeri is. What is Falconeri? Let's see. Big anteater? Hey, that's kind of a neat thing. Pig? That's a good guess. Alex, everybody guesses pig. Um, armadillo? Let's see. Rhino? That's a pretty good guess. Megan, that's also a, a good guess. Eva, good guess. Rhino is good. Hog? That's not it, Carrie. Hog is not correct. Rhino is not correct. Wild pig is not correct. Rhino is not. Let me give you a hint. If you were going on a trip, you would want to pack your trunk. Danielle is correct. It is a, I mean, no, it's not a rhino. It's not a hippo. It's a small mammoth. Rinky is correct. It is a mammoth. It is an elephant. That is the dwarf mammoth that lived on an island, and that's as big as that elephant grew. It is a dwarf mammoth. That is brilliant, Bacon. <laughs> no, it's not Bacon. It is a dwarf mammoth. You guys are really good at this. I'll give you a real tough one. This is going to be hard. Nobody's going to get this one. What do you think this animal is? And by the way, Rebecca Elephant was correct on the previous one. What do you guys think this thing is? Its name is Hyracodon. What do you think this animal is? Can anybody guess what it is? <laughs> this is hard. Warthog is a good guess, but that's not it. It's a strange looking animal, I know. Donkey is a good guess, but that's not it. And any elephant is a good guess, but that's not it. This is going to be tough. This is going to be a tough one. A rhino, Alex Webb, nailed it. This is one of the earliest rhinoceroses. Rhinoceros, this is how big rhinoceroses used to be. That is how big they were. All right, I'm going to give you one that everybody better guess. What is that? <laughs> what do you think that thing is? <laughs> that is uh, this elasmotherium. You better get elasmotherium. Because elasmotherium is a gigantic, gigantic rhinoceros. It's a giant rhino. <laughs> Isn't that big? Look at the size. Listen, its horn is as long as my body. Its horn was as long as my body. Think of the size of that rhino. He's about the size. It's a raptor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a raptor.
Raptor. Listen to you. Go. You know what? Go back to bed. Let me talk to your mom again, Alex. <laughs> yes, the Woolly Rhino. Darcy, very well done. It is the Woolly Rhino. It is the Unicorn Rhino. Lana, you're exactly right. Um, uh, that's that's the nickname that they give it, the Unicorn Rhino. That's very, very good. So I know what you meant by that. A chicken. <laughs> Kim, knock it off. It ain't no chicken. All right. Everybody better get this next one. You all better get this next one. What kind of animal do you think that is? What do you think that is? That is indeed a giant ape-like creature called Gigantopithecus. Some people believe that it is more closely related to um, uh, orangutans. Some people believe it was more closely related to gorillas. But look at the size of that animal. Look at, Emma, that cannot be your dad. This does not have that much hair on its neck and back. Look at the size of that gigantic gorilla. All right, give you a super hard one now. What do you think that animal is? Its name is Argentavis. Its whole name is Argentavis Magnificence. It was found in South America, in Argentina. Some people classify it as a giant eagle. Some people classify it as a giant vulture. Whatever it is, it is huge. It is absolutely gigantic. You know, something just came to mind, and I'd like your guys' input on this. I took a year one time to study mythological animals and the legend of those animals and then connected them to prehistoric animals. Maybe I'll do a class on that. Maybe I'll do a class on dragons, legends, and myths. Michelle, if you're still on, or uh, uh, Alexis, if you're still on, Write that down and send me a message to remind me. I think I may do a show. If you guys would like to do a show on that, it would be a show just for fun. All right. Here's the next one. What is Magistotherium? What do you think Magistotherium is? And Vulture, Extra Large, Eagle. These are all comments from the one before. Uh, Karen, yeah, if you would like for me to do a class on that, I think I will. I think that would be fun. Definitely my brother. <laughs> All right, Chris, and I'll do. I, I'll definitely do a. Uh, I'll definitely do a, a class on that. That would be fun. So what? And no, Emma, that's not a rat. <laughs> Take a look at Magistotherium. Wolf is correct, Alex. Alex, you're not going to be allowed to play anymore because I knew you would know all the answers to these. But yes, Ava, very good. It is a wolf. It is a gigantic wolf that weighed 1,200 pounds. A 1,200 pound wolf. Oh, all right, we only have two more. And yes, to dragons, thank you, Victoria. I will do that class. I promise I will do that class. What is this? What is that? <laughs> yes, that is a giant. I'm not going to say the word until I see the first person's uh, answer come across. Not going to say it. I'm tempted to say it. Thank you, Emma. It is a camel. But look at the size of that. Alexandria, you are correct, honey. That is a camel. Nicely done. Wendy is right. Lauren is right. Kim is correct. All of you are correct. That is a giant camel. But look at the size of that camel. Can you imagine a camel that is nearly the height of a giraffe? Because that's what it was. That was giant. All right, here is our last one. This class has gone about eight minutes long, but we're having too much fun to stop. Here is the last one, everybody. I will tell you that this uh, desert ship is right, Andrew. What a great way to put it. Um, this is the largest land mammal that ever existed. What do you think this animal is related to? Take a look at the size of the animal next to me. Look at the size of the animal next to me. What kind of animal do you think this is related to? It is huge. It is absolutely huge. I mean, how big? And you know, giant taper, uh, Marina, that's exactly what I thought the first time I ever saw it. Alex is correct. That is a giant rhinoceros. Paraceratherium also goes by two other names, Indracotherium and Baluchotherium. Three names. 
Those are all gigantic relatives of the rhino, and they are that large. All right, this class was a lot of fun. I hope you guys like that. I'm looking at your answers panning by, and I'm thrilled at how many of you guessed so many of those different animals. Remember what I would like for you to do on your, uh, if you are, if you'd like to. I know you have other things that you need to do. I understand that. But if you don't have anything else to do, what I would like for you to do is go back and watch this video again and write down the name of a single animal that you thought was interesting. And I want you to tell me where it lived, when it lived, and what size it was. If you're an artist, try to draw a picture of it. That would be interesting. And then put that on the Dinosaur George Jr. Facebook page because I would love to see the work that you're doing. I would love to see pictures of you with your dinosaur toys or your dinosaur books or even your rocks and minerals. This is a page designed for kids. And I want you to be as big a part of it as you can. So if you want to post your questions or you want to post little videos about yourself, you can't use this page to advertise other businesses or anything like that. We can't allow that. But I would encourage you to do that. So one more time to make sure you all know what the schedule is. Friday, April 10th, Tyrannosaurus Rex. That's this Friday. Tuesday, April 14th, Animal Adaptations. Friday, April 17th, a class on rocks and minerals, including breaking open geodes to see what's inside. And April 21st is going to be ancient sea creatures. And then because of today's conversation, the Friday after April 21st, I don't have my calendar in front of me. The Friday after April, well, let me just open a calendar. Isn't technology amazing? That would be April 24th. We are going to do a class on dragons, legends, and myths. And that should be a lot of fun. All right, everybody, because this class has gone on so long, I just do not have the time. I'm so sorry. I don't have the voice to go any further. I can't talk because I'm a little horse. I'm a, I'm a little. Let me try that again. <clears throat> I can't take any questions because my throat is sore because I'm a. I'm a little horse. Yeah. That was hilarious. Uh, but I don't have time for questions this time. Oh, one last thing before I go. The Dinosaur George pop-up questions and answers. We tried that yesterday. Not all of you got notified. Please make sure to click on the link that says you want to be notified when I go live. The pop-up questions were a lot of fun. I will do those periodically. I'll give you a little bit of advance notice. And when I'm on... If you have questions, let's go then. Thank you guys so very much for this. I hope all of you enjoyed this class. I enjoyed teaching it very much. And I will see you all Friday when we learn about the king of the dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now I'm going to drink some hot tea because my voice is... <laughs>